Wait a minute. Hold up. What the? <laughs> what? What? Wait, what? Every single shot in this movie, is when you can see the sky, the entire sky is CG. Action movies have to earn it, right? They have to earn it. You need to see the actors doing this. This is the most artistic <laughs> nuclear bomb CG rendering I've ever seen. As far as CG goes, it's, it's good CG. It's pretty good, actually. Thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Stick around to the end so you can find out more about Vessi's Black Friday sale. What's up guys? Welcome back to Visual Effects Artist React. Today's a special day because I just finished Son of a Dungeon. That means I have free time to do other things. Dude, <laughs> like the this. biggest project in Corridor's history has now completed as of today, the uploading of the final episode. Yeah, so obviously we're watching this video, you know, probably a week or two after that, but go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's on CorridorDigital.com where we also have extended React episodes, which is perfect because this episode is going to be extended as <laughs> Wait, really? Don't you mean extended as wow? Yeah, no, they'll, they'll add that in there later. What if we didn't? What if we just dropped a hard F bomb just right on YouTube? <laughs> 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 All right, let's get into it. Are we looking at the Grand Canyon? <gasps> We're looking at a nuke. Oh, actually, this is pretty sweet. They even have all like those little streamers up in the air for the shockwave testing. Yeah. Wait, that's what the streamers are for? Yeah, shockwave testing. Oh, look at the shockwave going out. I just realized. This is the most artistic <laughs> nuclear bomb CG <laughs> rendering I've ever seen. The most hipster nuke ever. <laughs> I love the lighting. Yeah, dude. Nailed it. Especially the going for that like crunchy black and white grade on it too. Oh, it's breaking down. It's starting to break down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually know where it goes from here, by the way. <laughs> this is probably... I kind of want to see what happens. Yeah, where is this going? This is sweet. Like, we're still inside a nuclear mushroom cloud, right? Yeah. So it's like, it's one of those things where I can't really question the quality of the visual effects when they seem so obviously intentional. When it comes to David Lynch, every single thing feels intentional. Like, every single pixel feels intentional. Like, whether or not you feel like there's any guidance <laughs> to that intention, I don't know. <laughs> or if there's coherence, I think that's up to the viewer a little bit. And I think this whole interpretation has been that of a nuclear blast. You know, particles and energy and fire. So I want to see that nuke again. Let's go back to the beginning. At first, I thought this was like an infrared shot, which is ironic because of what we're gonna look at later. It's a really powerful shot for a TV show, especially like in terms of nukes. Like nukes are always kind of janky because it's such a really hard flow physics thing to like actually simulate without having to just fake it. And obviously they're faking it here, but like a lot of great artistic decisions to make it like really impactful. The framing, the lighting, the color. It's all very heavily art directed and guided. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it feels really realistic and grounded. The shockwave that expands and like... The shockwave is perfect. I don't think I've ever seen a better nuclear shockwave, more tastefully and accurately done than this one. This scene, I'm fairly certain, is 100% CG, and that includes the entire environment. If I was to do this shot, I would basically start by going to like Google Earth, do a 360 aerial of this area, and then run that through Polycam to get a 3D model. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even just taking like a topology map and yeah. extruding the ground out of that. Yeah, I think people really underestimate how easy it is to make 3D models of things as long as you can go like and look around it. <laughs> I happen to do a ton of research on this uh, this summer. So all those satellites flying around in our skies, what are they for? Lots of things. Some of them, <laughs> some of them have really high resolution LIDARs, basically. Oh, really? You can access the LIDAR data through different like government websites. So it's becoming a lot easier to actually create terrain like this because you can get point cloud data that's like one meter resolution. Oh wow. my God. That's really cool. Now, somebody might be thinking like, why don't you just get an aerial shot and comp this in? Lighting, I think. Lighting. Lighting, 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 lighting. It's a nuke at night. The nuke needs to cast lighting and shadows in the landscape, and you're not going to get that if you just use footage of the landscape. Well, I mean, you can. It you just can. wouldn't be as detailed, because now you're having to like add in like lighting and stuff. But like if you look at the mountains up in the top left, they get reflected as if you're shining a light up at the side of a mountain. You know, it's like, I mean, a big light, a nuke layer light. <laughs> but then from there, it's like, all right, you do some cloud sims of like this little layer of clouds. So you're getting like nice parallax as the camera's moving. And then you just do a Houdini sim of a giant smoke cloud. And it's probably a few different Houdini sims happening here. Absolutely. One for the shock wave, 
one for the actual smoke, one for the fireball and all that stuff. What I know of the visual effects about Twin Peaks is that they're usually kind of janky and that's kind of the point. Yeah. We looked at the tiny head scene, right? Yes. The ball head scene, sorry. He turns into like a marble or whatever. Yeah, you know, like, so we looked at another David Lynch effect shot and we felt like it was really janky, but at the same time, it didn't feel like it was an accident, right? Yeah, it's like the janky effects, they, they're still evoking a very strong emotional response. And when that happens, it's no longer just a janky effect and it's doing something. There's art to the jankiness. And when it comes to David Lynch, I can't help but feel like that is intentional because of how it makes people react. Yeah, you know, in a way it's like, we've seen a lot of VFX explosions, but this one felt so different. And it's kind of exciting seeing somebody like David Lynch use visual effects because he uses them for such a different purpose than everybody else. It's such a different style of storytelling with them. And this shot is technically probably easier to execute than like all the stuff in Marvel. I'm not, oh, yeah. not, trying, to, not trying to downplay it. Obviously there's amazing art direction and simulations happening. Like it's not an easy shot, but at the same time, like this hits me harder. Sam. You think I'm going to show you a nice new clip and not follow it up with a janky new clip? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Come on, Christian, get, get us. Oh, The Walking Dead. This probably has the same budget as David Lynch's Twin Peaks. I don't know. Oh, I, yeah. Dude, The Walking <laughs> Dead. But this is Fear the Walking Dead. Is this a different show? Yes, this is like the spinoff of The Walking Dead. So we're about to see a nuke perfectly set up. Very... Right there. And here it comes. Oof. Cop out. <laughs> All right, okay. they're showing us a bunch of different perspectives. So that their perspective is a cop out. All right, this one. I love this one. <laughs> Wait <Done>. a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. What the? <laughs> what? What? Wait, what? Dude, dude this is like David Lynch. <laughs> dude, what? She just transforms. <laughs> Not even any smoke. It's like everything in meal combusted and then no smoke. But that's not how that works. <laughs> no. Not only did it burn, it's now burnt. It's done burning. <laughs> they just had to fast forward through that part really quick. So it's one of those things where like they took the right idea and only really used 5% of it. Yeah. Which is like when a nuke goes off, it's like the most intense sunburn. It literally make paint just evaporate instantly at up to like a couple miles away, but it wouldn't char the backside of her body and also leave no smoke or everywhere fire. or fire. Yeah, it's like- <laughs> Now watch the size of the explosion here. Just, just look at it. That doesn't even look like a nuke. It's not, it's just, it's gotta be stock footage, honestly. I mean, I doubt it's a custom sim set up for the shot. I think this is well, all- Well, I mean, all of the smoke rolling over the hills is a custom sim, so they at least have that much. I mean, like, but like that bomb is like the size of like, like, <laughs> it's like the size of like what, like a, it's just a big bomb. <laughs> it's not yeah. like a nuke. It's just like a big normal bomb. It's like when they do like the ammo dump detonations out in like Iraq or Afghanistan. The shockwave looks so good over the hills though. Like seeing it roll over the hills and there's no more trees. And yeah. it's just, well, it like, looks like a miniature, great. you know? It looks like someone shoots their vape down at like a... I mean, <laughs> like yeah, a, it looks like a, real <laughs> a recreation of the train. Like the scale's a little wonky. Like it looks yeah. cool, the actual shockwave. Cool. Like, it's not realistic, but it looks cool. There's no atmosphere compression happening. There's, you know, you're not actually getting any, like, interaction in the sky, which you would get, like, where you'd have, like, the white vapors appear. Yeah, I guess the reason why this shot is just kind of bizarre to me is because it seems very poorly executed on top of some pretty advanced things happening. And it's like, yeah. they kind of clash. Like, the whole smoke sim, the compositing of all that, even, like, having her as a crispy character and the ground all be suddenly burnt, all of those are good ideas but just the marriage of those ideas just doesn't. Yeah, it's like technically the shot's a good shot, but this is not what happens when a nuke goes off. Everything doesn't turn to embers like it's been coated in lava for two weeks. Well, it's more like, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like order of operations too. That's yeah. the other thing. It's like pulling a guy on a wire and then setting off the explosion, you know? <laughs> it's like, that's the effect that I see here. That's a good know? way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> and maybe it's a great wire stunt, and it's a great pyrotechnic explosion, but you pulled the guy too soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, TV shows. It's always fun to look at TV shows because they just don't have the same budget as movies, so it makes it easy for us to look at things. <laughs> but they're so innocent and pure. Yeah, it's like us. So I have written a video about the true scale of nuclear explosions. Don't know when I'll start making it, but subscribe so that you don't miss out when I eventually do. But we do have a video coming out tomorrow, and it looks a little bit like this. Do you remember... Frozen Crossing Alpha. 
everyone's frozen in time and the camera's moving through that. When they needed to speed up the shot, they would take the footage and fast forward it, but then you get the yeah, 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 yeah. But if they were able to just do a radiance field scan of the whole thing, they could pick and choose their camera moves after the fact. This is the nerd. Dude, whoa! So I saw a movie this summer that I adored, and that movie is called Nope. Jordan Peele's third movie. Have you guys seen it? Nope. Nope. Wait, really? I thought you saw it. I have not seen it. Nope. <laughs> this is a movie that seems to be a certain way on the surface, but is a different movie underneath that. So on the surface of this movie, it's like a UFO film. And so there's a UFO hiding up in these clouds. So we can't even really see anything yet, but it's working so well to create tension. You're just like, we're pointing the camera at something, and I know something's there, I just can't see it. Oh, so it moved. Yeah, it's gone. That's cool. That's a nice scene. It's moody. First of all, every single shot in this movie, in this location at least, when you can see the sky, the entire sky is CG. Because the clouds are an actual character in this movie, and so they had to be able to have full creative freedom on what those clouds look like and what they do. So that's kind of like the reasoning behind that, but they still are shooting a lot of this stuff at night. But the problem with shooting at night is that there's no light. And, you know, if you want to be able to see the environment around you, you can't do that at night. And so you do this process called day for night filming. Because what they were wanting to go for is they wanted to kind of emulate that sort of scary feeling of being out in the wilderness in the middle of the night when there's no light anywhere and your eyes adjust. But look at the quality of the light, how everything seems to be evenly lit. Yeah. So you can still see the mountains off in the distance. You can kind of see all of your environment around you, but it's so dark you can barely make out anything. And there hasn't been a good way of emulating that sort of look through day for night. And so the cinematographer and the VFX team collaborated on this really cool technique to basically combine filming two different cameras at the same time. They filmed every shot on both the IMAX camera and an infrared camera through a crazy like stereoscopic rig. So they're using a mirror and one camera is behind like the angled mirror and it's getting the shot and the other camera is on the mirror and getting the light. So they're both getting the exact same shot with exactly. two different cameras. But what the infrared camera is doing is it's able to bring out a lot of the detail in the mountains and the landscape and you end up with these different like luminance values that a regular camera just can't get. Yeah, like with infrared, plants reflect infrared, so they all appear white. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the sky appears black, so you end up with like a nighttime sky. That's really interesting. But the problem is that it's black and white footage, and there's still color in the night. And so that's why they had the IMAX camera to kind of apply all the color onto the luminance channel of the infrared footage. I wonder if the infrared helped them out like the sand screens helped out the dune production. I hope it saved them time. <laughs> I hope it saved them I time, too. Them time. I know, because I hear that, and I'm like, whoo! Because I, I don't know. Like, I'm like, it, this is like a new idea of like, oh, wait, have we been just shooting day for night all wrong? Having tried to film at night, trying to get it to match what you actually see as a human being is very, very difficult. Like, it's clear that a lot of the foreground is lit normally and then just rotoscoped and color graded down. But being able to just have your landscape just something that you can pluck from. And, you know, I don't know if they're taking the landscape from the RGB footage or the infrared footage or a combination of the two. But at the very least, you're going to get some nice crisp shapes, especially with the actor against the background, thanks to having, like, the infrared versus the real camera. They haven't released any breakdowns on it. Maybe it was something that looked great on set, and when it actually came time to doing the stuff in post, they're like, mm, we didn't really use it that much. There's a chance that that's the situation. <laughs> I know, I know. But I love the idea. See, that's the type of creative, like, filmmaking problem solving that I love. They're like, we need a good day for night shot. We're going to involve infrared stuff. It's like, yeah. What we don't know behind the scenes, if it is the case, is like, yeah, actually, uh, it was just, we didn't actually use any of it. It was good reasons. <laughs> All right, real quick. Since you guys haven't seen it, there's a really cool shot. Christian, go to the Akira slide. Oh, they do an Akira slide in this? It's towards the end. It's towards the very end. Hold on. So we mean since we haven't seen it, we're gonna go right to the no, end. Me, I don't care. Wait, didn't we ruin Dune for you? Yes. So uh, this is uh, revenge. This is revenge. All right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, that's so funny. Really funny. <laughs> so they, so that's totally on a rig. Yeah, they had to it's build gotta it. be right. That's totally like on rails, basically. Yeah. You know, I think what they did is probably did a paint out where they had like some sort of like steel like rail or guide 
that yeah you can if you mm -hmm. go into the top of the shot you can totally see there's like a paint out there because that's that's a fully controlled action it's like a like an amusement park ride so right there yeah you mm -hmm. see see that blurry fuzziness of that line there yeah, yeah i like can actually see the track oh, go off oh. on the ground briefly yeah it's like a solid track that they have like an angled bike and if they just go Ear, you know yeah i mean that's what you gotta do it's because it's an entirely unrealistic motion it's yeah. impossible <laughs> unless you're an anime character you can't do it <laughs> This is a freaking Akira slide in the in this movie. It's pretty funny. And Jordan Peele was so excited when someone asked me, I was like, I gotta do it. <laughs> I gotta do the Akira slide. I was like, hell yeah, you did. And it was sick. It was also just so out of place that I just couldn't help but cheer. <laughs> I did not expect it. Yeah, there's a bunch of other really cool VFX in this movie. There's the whole chimpanzee. There's the design of the UFO itself and all of this stuff at night, you know. Nope. Great movie. I loved it. Would you recommend it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The sequel's <laughs> called Yup. <laughs> the Samaritans. Is this one of those like, you know, make a quick buck international Steven Seagal market movies? Or is no, this like a theatrical this is like, film? Uh, like kind of like a take at doing a superhero thing a little bit. So this was recommended in the comments. They said, take a look at the de-aging of Sylvester Stallone. A lot of fire. A lot of, a lot of fire. CG fire. Oh. Yeah, CG fire doesn't look very that strong. Bad. Wait, that dude was just floating above his hands. Of course. No! Dead. <laughs> okay, flashback. Wait, who? What the? Wait. What? Uh. He's like the handsome Chad meme. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, if the whole movie was CG and we cut to this shot, I would be like, it's yeah, fine. It'd be fine. But yeah. the reason why that's not working in our heads right now is that we know that that's footage of him that's been altered in a movie that's live action and should look live action. Yeah, it's weird to like go to Love, Death and Robots for a minute <laughs> and then come back out of it. Yeah, that's like a full CG head. Yeah, straight up full CG head. And you know what? As far as CG goes, it's, it's good CG. It's pretty good, actually. But like... It's the wrong move right now to be like, full CG head. It's like, whoa, how is this kid totally fine? May, may, there might be a super hot powers thing involved here somehow that we're just unaware of. It's impossible for me to suspend my disbelief in, in scenes like this, because I'm just like, I know how hot it's. It's like water would literally just boil. This is a little bit what happens when you don't have practical stuff on set. You don't quite know where to gauge all your, uh, like, where, what energy level should you be at right now? It's like, I don't know, how hot is it? The director said it was hot, like 100 degrees? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, like, hot, on, like 100 degrees. Like, out the hottest day that you can think of. It's like, well, that's pretty 100, hot. 105. <laughs> Dude, that dummy. Oh my god, wait a second. Let's take a look at this dummy first. You're like, kid, turn into a dummy quick. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he turns so Whoa, fast. That, that animation, <laughs> uh, that <laughs> rendered jump. He got so Whoa, much wait. Dude, Unreal Engine. What? <laughs> okay, he's got superpowers. Okay. He's got superpowers. He okay. must. He must. We don't know the context. <laughs> that's, why he came back, that's why he came back to life, dude. Yeah, he's got superpowers. <laughs> and then this shot. <laughs> this shot right here. What the hell? You can only have blue color when there's <laughs> blue wavelength in your life. And there's none of that fire is emitting blue wavelength at the moment. <laughs> I mean, he's got blue jeans and a blue shirt on. Yeah, it would be gray in this situation. Yeah, they're just trying to make him stand out a little bit more. Because in reality, he'd be like kind of like a faded silhouette here, but whatever. In reality, it, you would not see anything because of all the smoke. Yeah. yeah. Who needs reality <laughs> when you can just make whatever you want, right? Just for reference, right? Reference is what you need to make a good shot. Just backdraft, final fight. This is the scene that they're trying to do in VFX, done for real. Yeah, by the way, how sick is that shot? Oh, ow. <laughs> oh my aye, god, aye, aye. those are real fire stunts. Those people were actually there. Dude, look, look at what? all the gas. Look at all the gas that gets thrown out and then ignited. And you're just hoping that the barrel's not gonna land on you. They must be on wires. I'm sure they're on wires. Mm. Dude, an axe fight in an exploding barrel factory? Yeah, and they're like, they've earned everything to get here, too. So you're just like, yeah, axe fight in an exploding barrel factory. That's a cool shot. Look at that. Dude, a fire stunt with the actual actor. It's a wire stunt and a fire stunt at the same time without doubles. Man, so cool. 
Dude, good on the actors, man, for like doing this too. Action movies have to earn it, right? They have to earn it. You need to see the actors doing this, you know? And if it's not gonna be an actor, it needs to be a stunt person doing an insane stunt and then they need to earn it. Like, then you're there. Like, then you're in the show. You feel the tension. So I guess now having watched this, my main note on the stuff with Stallone, I don't think the exposure was correct. Yeah, notice how this is more yellow than orange and it's a little bit more blown out. But here, what I'm mostly seeing is just mostly a bunch of orange and like red and red yeah it's like when it starts getting too orange it looks too cg to me you're right 100 percent. and you know part of it's the color grade but just like fire when it's hot isn't orange the actual color it's putting off is like a yellow white and then there's just like a haze like a lens haze, flare yeah. haze and a smoke haze that lifts the black levels it so makes it much just, like, like there look how it is. yeah because like here they've got a lot of great fire elements. They've got tons of ember, little like heat ripples in the air. And they do have smoke in the background, but we're not getting that sort of universal volumetric fog that a freaking smoky yeah. room would have. And it's not lighting things up, right? It's like all this smoke, all this haze in the room should be bright. And not only is the fire bright, but the haze takes that light and diffuses it. So everything gets a wash of brightness. Just like this room is this like a wash yeah. of daylight from gray like their fog. skylights. Well, it gets difficult because like if you know you're going to be putting elements behind someone or have to comp stuff, you don't want to fill your room with haze and fog because like, okay, now maybe it's harder to track stuff or it's harder to do that compositing. So, you know, you film this scene without the haze. Yeah. And then adding CG haze back in, it kind of sounds easy, but it's also kind of hard because haze is very... 3D. Yeah, you basically need, especially in the thick haze, you need that Z depth. If somebody's going like this, their hand is going to be more clear than their face. I feel like they're like, no, I want to be able to see the emotions of my actors, and I don't want to like obscure that. But at the same time, it's like you can obscure it a little bit. If you're gonna commit to a burning room, you gotta take the pros to the cons. <laughs> the cons is it's gonna be hazy, and you're not gonna be able to see your actors very well. Like this shot's great. Yeah. Uh, this isn't bad either. That one's not bad at all. Like I would put a little bit more foreground haze there, but like. Yeah. And look how like they're not just covered in sweat, they're covered in soot and dirt and grease. They look like the place was burning. <laughs> and of course, like literally neither of them have soot on them at all. <laughs> I guess he did get hit with the hose, but that kid could use a little smudge. You know what? It's funny. Coming back to this now, it really is not holding up as much. On our first viewing, I was like, yeah, this is cool. You know, it's like, it's not distracting. Like, yeah, the setting is weird, but visually it's working. But then you see backdraft and it's like, oh. <laughs> You know, so often people are like, the VFX brought me out of the shot. And it's like, the VFX aren't bringing me out of the shot here. They're just, they're along for the ride. Yeah. As I leave the shot. <laughs> yeah. This one's really hard to get right. And frankly, I feel like if the scene would have been just approached a little bit differently in how it's shot and directed, you could have the exact same visual effects and they'd totally sell. That being said, elements being used, super cool. Like all those sparks in the air and like the burning columns and stuff like that. The tiny, like sprinkly, twinkly ground fire and stuff mm -hmm. like the little like, groundlings. The groundlings, awesome. Like, it's it's super cool and vibrant. Frankly, like, if I was shooting, like, a movie with a big room on fire and this is, like, what the effects house gave me, I'd be amped. I'd be like, this is good work. It's just, I would need to make sure that the scene I'm making meshes yeah. <laughs> with what they're doing. Exactly. Superhero movies are weird. They're tough, man. They're a tough tone to get right. The, the end. end. <laughs> <laughs> If you have any boom booms or fires that we should take a look at, let us know in the comments below. Maybe we should do another episode just about nukes. I mean, we will. Let us know. Ho, ho, ho! Christmas has come early thanks to our sponsor, Bessie. I'm here to give the gift of Bessie this Christmas. Hey, kid, come here. Have you heard about Bessie shoes? I got them, I got them, I got them, I got them. You think I don't know Bessies? They have a patented Dymatex material that keeps you cool in the summer and all warm and snugly in the winter. Oh, well, of course I knew that, boy. But uh, did you know that they now make gloves? Here, take some. Oh, that's actually ah. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. What is going on with her? Well, here's another young lad. Have you been a good boy? I've been a wonderfully good boy. Amazing! Well, I brought you a pair of Vessies. All right, I actually, I'm already wearing my Vessies because my shoes are 100% waterproof, meaning I can wear them rain or shine. It's pretty great. Keeps my feet dry all the time. Oh, well, okay, good boy. Um, take a hat. It's waterproof as well. Oh, 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 where's this kid come from? Hello, come here, boy. Yeah. Oh. There we are! Yeah, they're lightweight and breathable. It's like, just like wearing socks. It's crazy. Oh, well, no, you don't have to do that with your hands. You can wear these Vessi gloves. Oh, 
Are you kidding me? <laughs> good boy, good boy. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, Sam. Do you have gloves? More good boys. Matthew J. Cairns. Santa? Hello. You look a little thinner. I thought Santa would be a little fat. Well, I actually went vegan this month, okay. but uh, good to know that Bessies are actually also vegan. Oh, wow. Really? What What do you got in the sack there? Well, I'm going to give you a pair of Vessies, young boy. Sorry, I, I know you flew all the way down here from the North Pole, but I already have Vessies. Yeah, I got like three pairs. What do you do in them? I can wear these Vessies on a run. I can stomp around in puddles to, you know, show off to my friends. Let me talk to you, boy. Come in. That's Let me tell weird. you something. <laughs> Now, now you may have Vessies, but what you don't have is Vessie socks. Okay. All right. Now, the first hundred people to use the code socks corridor crew get mm. a free pair of socks upon a Vessie purchase. Oh, okay. Socks corridor oh, crew. Goodbye, goodbye. I did it. Amazing revelations. It looks like everyone in this studio truly wears Vessie sneakers. Click that link, go to Vessie.com slash Corridor Crew for amazing Black Friday sales. Remember, get your free socks, the first 100 people. <laughs> Good times. Dude, I mean, that was cool. I didn't expect to have a bit of a theme for this episode, but I enjoyed it. I just, I love looking at Backdraft. I'm trying to share with the world how cool Backdraft is. Everybody yeah, slept on Backdraft. And of course, as always, you can watch the extended version of this where we go into even more rambling detail about all of this stuff. Check it out on the website, quarterdigital.com. Yeah, if you miss one thing that we say, you're missing out. Well, thank you for watching and we'll see you next week. Or tomorrow. Tomorrow, we have videos oh, yeah. on Sunday, Yeah, man. tomorrow, we'll see you then. <laughs> but if you're only coming back for this show, see you next week.